What's up everyone? Today, uh, I was gonna say we're currently in fast travel, but we are no longer in fast travel. And, uh, here we have this beautiful FDRX7. Uh, I've built the drift car out of it. Because, well, I've had this for a long time, I should start with. I've had this for a long time. And it has dawned on me that we have never done a drift build on an RX7 and posted a video about it. We've done a rally build on an RX-7. Uh, we did a couple different toge builds in the like initial D series that we did. Uh, was that a year ago? Year and a half ago, probably about now. And uh, built a couple there, but we have yet to build a drift RX-7 and actually post a video about it. So that's what we're doing today. Give you a rundown on what we're doing. Heading down the mountain pass through the drift zone, show you what it could do. Heading on over to the festival, giving you guys the build and tune. And neat thing about it, it still has the rotary. It still has the rotary. So let's roll. Let's get on it. Let's get to it. Get down to business. And then I remember why I have a little bit of like that one area of me just like despises RX-7 drift cars or at least like driving them and it's that they rev so damn high. Like that high rev, it's good for... It's good for track cars, and it's good for toge cars. And which, I should also add, while we're here, my main toge car, or, well, mountain pass car, is an RX-7. Is it the same one? Yeah, it is the same one, it's a 2002. So it is an RX-7, I will add. And that lag spike coming out of the pause menu there was not ideal, but we're going to deal with it. We are about 40,000 points behind my average. Probably because of that beginning section where I just could not get the car to go sideways. And I realize I'm talking like a robot now. Probably should stop doing that because definitely not a machine, no robot. Um, yeah. Handles good though. I'll give it that. When it's at the high RPMs, it handles. It's when it's at these low RPMs, it's kind of not the greatest situation. And like right now, I'm in a spot where second gear is too low, third gear is too high. That's where the. Uh... And then I go and do something like that. You know what guys, you know what, as much as I hate to do this, I hate to do this, and those of you who have been around a while know that I don't like restarting things, but I feel that a redemption run is due here. So let's get it going and let's get it going properly this go around. Even though we're still kind of behind the average. Um, much better than last time, I might add. But then we enter that sticky spot. Of second gear is too low, third gear is too high. And I can't keep it on the road. But yeah, we are much 
much, much better pace this go around points wise. Because I feel like, yeah, I want you guys to pay attention to how the car drives, how it handles, its weaknesses, its strengths. But I feel like a lot of you are paying attention to those points as I drift it down the mountain. Oh, almost lost it there, almost straightened out, but we got it. A lot of you guys are paying attention to those points. It's not that I don't want you to, it's that like sometimes I mess up. Like in the last run we just did, where we got I think around to this point, maybe a little further. I think at that hairpin because I went off the road. Let's hopefully not do that again. I think I held on to that uh, e-brake a little too long there. It's all good though, it's all good. We are very behind pace as far as points, but we're still pretty up there. Might be able to, oh, went down to first gear. That's no bueno right there. Uh, might still be able to crack out a 900 which is pretty good. That's better than like an average drift car. Like an average drift car will put out around like 750 to 800. The good ones will put out like 900 plus. Like the really good ones you're into, you're like 1 million, 1.1 million and above. Hitting that tree back there was intentional. Anyone who says otherwise in the comments, you're a liar. Um, why anyway, getting over to the ow, wrist? What the heck? The wrist just like popped. I don't know if the mic picked that up or not, but that didn't feel too great. Let's get on into the upgrades here. The 2.6 liter racing four rotor. Normally, in a situation like this, I'd go with one of these engines, but decided to keep the rotary. All-wheel drive, yeah, no, I'm an all-wheel drive drifter, but in my personal opinion, I think that drifting all-wheel drive is more difficult than rear-wheel drive. That's my opinion, though, because I can prevent a car from spinning out. Like, that's one of my main skills is, like, spin recoveries if I do spin and not spinning. Where the four wheel drives, they want to straighten out. And I countering that is the difficult part. That's why you always see me like hitting the e brake, just ripping that thing. Is because you have two counters. You can downshift or you can rip the e brake to spike the RPMs to give you like more control. And you. you downshift that like increases your chances of spinning or straightening out I swear like if you rip the handbrake sure it's still possible but it's less likely and you also the main risk with the handbrake is you risk slowing down too much but anyway back into the build so for the arrow you go ahead and do whatever you want to do here put whatever you want on this car but I have the Bomex sport front bumper the stock rear wing because that is atrocious that one's not bad I kind of like that one that one's not bad we're not gonna talk about that one that one's cool I can respect that and no wing but I like the stock wing on the RX-7s I always have like the FDs for the rear bumper minus stock go ahead do what you want though there's a few different hood options here. Of course the stock which is ventless. A couple vents here, a couple vents there. I went with the Sea West Street hood. For side skirts, minor stock. But like I said, put whatever arrow you want on there. Whoops. 
whatever you want to do. It's all up to you. Then you want the drift tire compound. Whoa, my. Whoa. We're not going to talk about that. We're not. We are not talking about that. If you didn't hear anything happen right there with me talking, if you didn't hear that, let's keep it that way. If you did, nothing happened. Okay, nothing happened. Then for uh, tire width, you want the 255s in the front, 305s in the rear. Wheels, go ahead, do whatever you want. It's all up to you. I just like stock wheels and decided to leave them. And I was partially lazy when building this, so yeah. Max track width in the rear. Then for the front, you want the second one, which is the one over here on the right. The upper right, I guess, I would say. Moving over to the drivetrain, you want the race 7 speed transmission. Race driveline. You know what? I wonder, because of those high RPMs, and given that this is a rotary, if it would be better to move to the 4 speed, or like a lower gear transmission, normally I would use the 7, but maybe given that this is the rotary, might not be a bad idea to move to the 4. I'm not saying to do that, but I'm going to do some experimenting behind the scenes, and we'll see what happens. But for now, we're going to do the race 7 speed. Race drive line. I'd also like to add if I improve this car in any way, we will make another video on it. Because I need content. Okay. Drift differential. Race brakes. Drift suspension. Race front anti roll bars. Race rear anti roll bars. No roll cage and race weight reduction. Let the rotors scream! If only like while we were in here, just hear that brr 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 That'd be cool. And no restrictor plate. Now that we're done with the build, let's move on over into the tune. With the tire pressure being 30-30, front and back, gearing 2.20 final drive. I believe the rest of this to be stock. If it's not, pause the video, go ahead and adjust your gearing accordingly, and you can go ahead and resume. So I'll give you a second to do that. Now that uh, we are moving forward, for the alignment, the camber in the front you want negative 4.5, in the rear you want negative 1.0. For the toe you want 2.6, I almost said 5, you want 2.6, 26, lucky number, luckiest number in the world. Anyway, 2.6 out in the rear, you want zero. Front caster angle of seven. Anti roll bars in the front, you want 12.8. In the rear, you want 13.4. For the springs in the front, you want 335.0. In the rear, you want 391.3. For the ride height, you want 7.2 in the front, 6.3 in the rear. Damping the rebound, you want 5.7 in the front, 5.9 in the rear. For the bump, 2.5 in the front, 2.7 in the rear. Arrow, if you got it, leave it stock. Braking, you want 100% balance towards the front. 100% to pressure is what I was about to say. 102% pressure, I need water and I, I don't have one with me. I don't have a bottle of water with me. Um... Probably gonna go get one after I record this. I'm feeling rather parched. Anyway, 102% pressure. Finally, for the differential in the front, you want 30% acceleration, 0% deceleration. In the rear, you want 100 acceleration, 0 deceleration. The center balance of 75% towards the. <clears throat> excuse me, towards the rear. I really need a beverage. I'm dehydrated. Stay hydrated out there, guys. Anyway, um, without further ado, let's go do some donuts, because that's how we end them all off around here. Get away from the copyrighted music at the festival. The dirty copyrighted music. 
always giving me strikes. Well, not strikes, but uh, copyright claims. That being said and done, just want to thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you in the next one, and uh, that's about it for me today.